Howdy everybody, this is Stephanie with Apex Languages. Today, we start another brand new segment, Civic Citizenship, brought to you unofficially by U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS. Many English language learners are also immigrants wading through the fun and exciting American naturalization process on their way to either permanent resident status or citizenship. By fun and exciting, of course, I mean long, stressful, and very expensive. Yay! I've been there. My husband became a United States citizen in 2013. There is a lot of paperwork, a lot of interviews, and a lot, a lot, a lot of just waiting around. Then, at the very end, the infamous naturalization tests, one for English and one for civics. The joke is that by the time new citizens have passed these tests, they know more about the country than people who were born here do. So native citizens are welcome to watch these videos as well to learn something. If you want to improve your English for the test, I've got lots of videos and other resources for that. Civic citizenship is meant to cover the civics you'll need to know, American history, geography, and government for those tests. I love history almost as much as I love languages, so I will try to teach you how to answer the 100 questions that could be asked during the test as painlessly as possible, with lots of fun facts thrown in along the way. I think they're fun, or at least interesting. To learn more about any of this, check out the USCIS's website right here. For the moment, though, let's get started. Our first subject. Name that state. The first question I have for you, word for word, right out of the civics test official study materials is, why does the flag have 50 stars? Do, 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 do. Time's up. The answer is because there is one star for each state in the union or country. There weren't always 50 stars, one was added every time a new state became official. If you Google old US flags, you'll find lots of different star patterns. So again, that's 50 stars because of 50 states. The stars and stripes, as we sometimes call the flag, has stripes as well as stars. Those red and white things that stretch horizontally. For the record, fun fact, the red stands for bravery, the white, stands for purity, and the blue stands for justice. Anyway, do you know how many stripes there are? This one is a lot easier to count. There are 13. So our next question from the test is, why does the flag have 13 stripes? That is because we started off with 13 colonies. What is a colony? Well, a colony, according to Webster's Dictionary, is a group of people living in a new territory while remaining part of their parent government. It also refers to the place that this takes place. Okay, so when you have people who live in, say, the United States, right, in, the, in North America, but they don't consider themselves American or, or anything like that, they still consider themselves British citizens. When George Washington was born, he was a British citizen. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, the whole lot. And so when they decided to create their own country, they had to completely change their mindset. Remember, always, the uh, uh, United States was the first country to stop being colonies and to make their own country. And so they really had to change their mindset and stop thinking of themselves as British and begin thinking of themselves as American. Let me use the word in a sentence. Uh, there were British, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, and even Dutch colonies in the New World. Remember, make that Y into an I when you, when you spell the word. You can see here the map of all the different colonies in the United States. Okay, we got a little brown for Russia, a little purple 
um, uh, for the Dutch, actually New York, New York State was originally founded by the Dutch. Uh, so they, they planted their flag in a couple of places. So there you've got colonies. A lot of times we talk about the uh, location where these people live, but it can also refer to the people themselves. Colonies can also uh, refer to people. So, you know, more generally, people who have similar interests or things with common characteristics. Our picnic was ruined when we unknowingly upset a colony of mean biting fire ants. Okay, so colonies of ants, colonies of killer wasps. Now that's in the news. Uh, so colony a lot of times uh, describes groups of animals that are very similar. Okay, big groups of animals. Uh, then in our second sentence, I'd stay away from that complex there. A nudist colony lives there. You know what nudists are? Those are people who don't like to wear clothes. They walk around naked all the time. So, you know, maybe that's where you want to go. You want to go live in a nudist colony. That's where they, they uh, a place where they can be separate and they can do whatever they want. They're all living together. That makes them a colony. They're all interested in the same thing, not wearing clothes to each his own, we say. So, We've established that there were 13 colonies at the start of the Revolutionary War. And when we became an official country afterwards, those became 13 states. Here's a question for you though. When did the United States officially become a country? This is not an official question uh, from the test, but it's a good thing for you to know anyway. Your options are 1776, 1718, 1783, 1789. You might want to practice pronouncing those. Uh, it's always good to practice those big numbers. So most people will tell you 1776, July 4th, 1776 to be exact. That is in theory when the Declaration of Independence was signed. We'll talk more about uh, what the Declaration was and what it did and what it did not do later. But a short explanation is that in this document, the colonists, the people who live in a colony, defended their right to free themselves from Britain, what is today England or the UK, today is the UK, the United Kingdom. Um, the Revolutionary War had just started though, and the US was losing bad. A poorly trained and poorly equipped group of farmers was trying to fight off the greatest army in the world at the time. That would be like if Puerto Rico decided to attack the United States and declare its freedom. Uh, it would not go well, and no one expected the United States to win either. So just because they said they were free, it didn't make it true. My daughter might call herself a doctor but I'm not going to let her operate me on, on me with a real knife until I see a diploma from an accredited college. Okay, just because you say something doesn't make it official, does not make it legally binding. The Battle of Yorktown, Virginia was the last battle of the Revolutionary War, and this took place in October of 1781. So does that mean with the war between the US and Britain over, it could finally call itself an independent nation? Well, the fighting might have ceased, but peace was not officially declared for another two years with the Treaty of Paris. Only then, with a clear legal victor, did other countries, including Great Britain itself, start officially recognizing the United States as more than just a colony. The, the other countries said, you're a country like us now. They let, they let us into their club. Finally, 1789, 16 years later, marks the ratification or approval of the Constitution and the birth of the US government as we know it today. More on that too later, but could you really consider the United States, the United States with any other government? The older system gave almost all rights to individual states to govern as they wanted. So before things were more like the European Union than a single unified country. 
Without a doubt, the reason that this is not an official question on the civics test is that it does not have a clear answer. If you had to choose what one answer, what would it be? What would you say? Write your answer in the comment section below. Let's get a debate going and practice that English. Well, you consider the previous question for fun. This next one is official. There were 13 original states, name three. Here is a map of all the current states of the United States. Can you name all 50? Pause the video and give it a try if you'd like. I could probably get them all looking at the map, but if I'm being honest, I might miss one or two. I know my geography better than many of my fellow Americans though, so don't feel too bad if you can't get them all. Plenty of native-borns can't either. If you remember the map from the other page, you'll know that much of the Midwest at that time was owned by France, and the far west was Spanish. So we can narrow this map down to the east coast. That should help. Still, there are 23 states left. We need to eliminate 10 more. Which ones need to go? Let's start with the ones not touching the coast. Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, and Alabama weren't added for another 20 years at least. West Virginia split apart from regular Virginia around the start of the Civil War in 1863, way after. A fun fact about the Southern states is that, as you can see from this new map, there was a lot of poorly defined unnamed territory claimed by the original colonies. So when the maps of territories like North Carolina were first drawn up, their Western borders actually extended all the way to the Mississippi. In other words, North Carolina originally included all the land that is today Tennessee. Kentucky was part of Virginia, etc. So let's eliminate them from our list as well. Up in the north, Vermont was part of New York State. So that was never considered a colony. Don't give it as an answer. Although it did become the 14th state in 1791. Maine, as you can see on the map, was part of Massachusetts for some reason. It took Maine until 1820 to become a state because both the United States and British Canada claimed rights to it. It was fought over in the War of 1812. They kept fighting over its exact northern borders for more than 20 years still after that. A significant proportion of the population still speaks French there today. Finally, as is also evident from the map, Florida was still owned by Spain, so it was never part of the original 13 colonies either. In fact, it didn't join the Union officially until 1845. So what does that lead us with? From north to south, we have New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Oh, I have to breathe after that. <laughs> Remember, Washington DC, or the District of Columbia, is not a state. So definitely don't say that. It didn't even exist until 1790, but was built up from an uninhabited swamp specifically for the purposes of becoming the seat of our new nation. For my Southern friends here in North Carolina, if I had to pick three states, they would be North Carolina, South Carolina, and then take your pick of Georgia or Virginia, whichever is your favorite. All right, real quick, let's review because practice makes perfect. Why does the flag have 50 stars? Because they represent the 50 states. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? Because they represent the 13 colonies. And finally, there were 13 original states. Name three. Well, you can pick one of the, uh, any of the 13, but I have here North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Virginia. The lecture note doesn't hurt, all right? So, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new and interesting. 
check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. Until then, have a happy, healthy, safe rest of your day. Take care.